welcome to another RSR. Tonight I'm reviewing New York Red Bulls 3, Toronto FC 0 in MLS 2024 Week 20 and Mexico 1 versus Jamaica 0 in the 2024 CONMEBOL Copa America Group B, Mexico 1, Jamaica 0 in la Grupo B de la Copa America CONMEBOL. First off, talk about Toronto. Red Bulls will rant about it. I don't know how long it'll take me, but there really ain't much to say about the Mexico game either, so we'll give it its piece, but I ain't even changing jerseys. I don't feel like it, because Toronto, you pissed me off. This is absolute diabolical, diabolical football they played tonight. Tenth minute, there's a heel attack rain delay. They don't play till 8.30 Central. 9.30 Eastern, they kick back off the 29th minute. 19 minutes later, Elias Manuel, ball played to him by Noah Eel. Manuel takes a banger of a shot, puts it past Gavron to make it 1-0. That's the way we go into half. Manuel with a beautiful, beautiful shot. Toronto didn't play horribly, but they did get beat with a banger. They couldn't get any offense really going. None of them really cared. None of them really cared. As evidenced by the fact Derek Etienne Jr. goes and touches the Red Bull logo walking out of the tunnel before the game. I know he was in their academy. I don't care. You don't play for him no more. That is some double agent type shit. In my book, to me... You leave the love for your former team till after the match. You clap your fans, then if you so desire, go clap the fans you grew up with. But not before the game! That's just double agent type shit to me. That's just like, yeah, I don't really want to perform my best tonight because this is the team I grew up with. Don't make it known like that. He didn't play well, so I'm just saying. Then the second half, Dennis Jangar scores, ball crossed in. He's on the ball, gets past Long and Rosted. He slides in, taps it in, 2-0. Then 74th minute, Cameron Harper burns the Toronto defense. Not the only time he did it, but the only time he scored a goal with it. Burns the defense. Nutmegs Mabaka rolls it past Gavron. 3-0. And that's the way it would end. 3-0 to the New York Red Bulls. On the night. Stats are as follows. 14 shots to 5. 7 shots on goal to 2. 41% possession to 59% possession. 385 passes to 582. 75% pass accuracy to 84. 9 fouls to 11. 2 offside to 1. 2 yellow cards to 2. 0 red cards to 0. 9 corners to 1. Toronto, my God. My God. They did not care at all tonight. You could just tell. It was an uninspiring performance. The defense played like crap. The offense did nothing. Kevin Long looked horrible. Longstaff actually put a little bit more of a shift in. The rest of the team sucked. Coelho got hurt. And Senya huffed and puffed like it was last year. Bernadeschi got marked out of the game. Owusu looked horrible. Etienne couldn't care. He didn't want to make his home fans feel sad. So, he played like a double agent, at least for the fact he didn't care. And he did make some bad plays, losing possession in the final third. Really could have started Malula and just absolutely not seen that happen. But for some reason, John Herdman hates Cassius Malula. But at this point, I don't get it. Mabaka, again, is better than Rawstead, but guess what? Yeah, he got nutmegged, I know, but Rawstead was still on the pitch. And let's be honest, Mabaka is still a better defender. Sometimes you get nutmegged. And he was a last line of defense. He could have pulled his leg in, but you know what? I would rather get nutmegged than fail 30 times a game like Rawstead. Sometimes it just doesn't go your way. 
okay? But Mabuka is still a better player. And again, John Herdman, for some reason, hates him. I don't get it. I, I don't get it. Mabuka was honestly one of our better players last year. And now it's like, nope, not good enough. I'd rather play Sigurd Rolstead, who was already a shit player. Okay, sure, why not? At least Kaweo gets a lot of starts. But again, this team needs a 10. I've been saying this for a long time. They need a 10. Whether well, it's the return of Pozuelo, they got a guy like Rafa Monta Nunez, Ustakio, who would play a better long staff role. He still would be an 8 at times, but when he goes forward, he could play the ball forward, cycle it better than long staff does. Oso's washed up. I don't want to hear it. He's washed up. Okay, I know he's not here, but he's washed up. He doesn't make any of this better. Hell, a retired Sebo would probably play better at the 10 than Longstaff or Oso. Let, let Sebo retire here. What's the worst that could happen? They need to make the forward line more dangerous because our defense isn't horrible, especially when they're at it. Today they were horrible because they couldn't care. But here's my theory. Here is my theory that defensively, this team gets more and more antsy the more we don't have the lead. The more we don't have the lead and it's a tie or we're losing, the more we make mistakes. Now, that needs to be fixed. But, again, if we could outscore our mistakes, I think we would if we just scored two or three goals a game, which is possible with the forward talent we have if we just had a 10. Because if we're allowed... If we let Bernadeschi and Insigne not be marked out of the game or have a 10 that could do it themselves, if you're going to choose to mark them out of the game, well, there you go. There you go. Simple. The tactics are horrible by John Herdman. He barely has any tactics, and this team has stopped running through a wall for him. They've seen through him quicker than Canada did. But when you're a club manager, it's easier to do because you're there week after week, day after day. When you're a national manager, your rope is a little bit longer, especially if you're getting results because they're like, you know what, we don't see you every day. I don't think Herdman's cracked up to be a club manager. Honestly, I don't. Even though when he was at the CSA, he was their puppy dog. Let me tell you one thing about John Herdman. Octavio Zambrano would have been good enough to get this Canada team to the World Cup in 2022. They probably would have done most of the stuff that Herdman had them do with Zambrano. He would have done the same. Most of it, if not all. If not better. John Herdman is a CSA puppy dog, or was the CSA puppy dog, that did good in chaotic environments but if it was enough bullshit he wouldn't say anything about it or he'd be like take his hat off i'm gone i'll move on just like he did with canada listen john herdman is a one tool one dimensional motivational shit talker that's all he is now he's not as bad as bob bradley that's a low bar to clear but he's not hell he's better than armis but he ain't the guy to save this team. Not like we thought, hell, a month and a half ago. Nobody could save this team. Unless you pull anchor, hoist the colors, man the cannons, and swing your sword. That is the only way this team's going to be saved. Telegram the pirate. Telegram a pirate. Either way. That's the only way this team's going to be better and saved. Because, I don't know. I think most managers are at least going to be like, you know what, this is okay. There's no bullshit here. I can handle this. I could tactically do better. No, maybe you can do better tactically, but you need to call out the bullshit that Bill Manning puts out on a weekly basis. You need to call out the bullshit of... This team is probably doing nothing during the transfer window and the bullshit that they blue balled everybody. They're going to miss the playoffs. They're in a wild card spot right now, but they are spiraling and going down like the Hindenburg as we speak. Like a stone in the ocean. They're going down. Oh, the humanity. They're going to collapse. Collapse.
this team's going to miss the playoffs. If they don't save themselves, this team's going to miss the playoffs. Point blank, period. Point blank, period. They're missing the playoffs. If they're not careful. And they don't want to save themselves. They don't want to be saved. No. No. I'm starting to feel like that locker room's about to get a bit more poisoned. Not as bad as last year. But this team is falling apart. They're falling apart. They're, they're falling apart. Simple. And there's only certain people who could save this from being a total, absolute shit show. But that's just all I'm going to say. Bill Manning, you need to go. John Herdman, you ain't that guy, pal. Jason Hernandez... I like you, but I need to see more from you. That's all I'm going to say. Simple. With that being said, Red Bulls, you did good enough. You did good enough, but Toronto just didn't give a shit. Y'all played a milk toast game. We just didn't give a shit. That's why you won. 3-0 to the Red Bulls. Good for them. They're a good team. Won their best performance, but... Toronto couldn't care less, so there you go. Let's move on to Mexico versus Jamaica. Mexico won, Jamaica nil. Mexico cero, Jamaica, or Mexico uno, Jamaica cero. Halftime was nil-nil. Both teams looked very good. The first 10 minutes, it looked like Mexico was really going to absolutely run down Jamaica's throat and score multiple on them. Then after that, Jamaica started to grow into the game. They looked better. They could have scored multiple times. They, We thought they scored with Mikel Antonio ball crossed in by Lembixa, diving header in the second half. Goal, but it's taken away on VAR because at first Antonio was offside on the first cross. And that is back to nil-nil, settle a settle. Then in the 69th minute, balls played to Gerardo Arteaga. He bangs it in past Jamali Waite. To make it 1-0. A golazo that saves Mexico and gets them all three points. Wasn't the most beautiful game, but they got it done. 1-0. Uno a cero. And full time it is 1-0. Uno a cero esta noche. They get it done. Both teams had their moments, but Mexico had the best moment. Full time stats. 20 shots, 13. 9 shots on goal to 4. 61% possession to 39% possession. 519 passes to 317. 83% pass accuracy to 74. 8 fouls, 7. 1 offside to 3. 0 yellow cards, 0. 0 red cards, 0. 7 corners to 6. Here, here I'm going to say that for me, I think both teams played well in this game. I think Mexico was just slightly better on the scoreline and on the night, but Jamaica put up a game fight. Jamaica put up a game fight, and arguably this game should have been a draw. They had so many chances that I didn't expect Jamaica to have, and they missed or screwed up every single one of them. Jamaica shot themselves in the foot. Let's just be absolutely honest here. They shot themselves in the foot. Jamaica should have drawn this game at the very least. Mexico... They did not look good for most stretches of this match, especially offensively. They had their moments, but they didn't look good. Quinones looked amazing. He was everywhere, I had to say. He was everywhere. Arteaga with a goal, a banger, a beauty. Thank him because he saved your ass, Mexico. He saved your ass, simple as. Gonzalez, he ain't no Malagón. And honestly, I think Ochoa would have been better at this point. Let's just be honest. So, Gonzalez, I don't think Acevedo or Rangel would be any better, to be honest. I think this is the best what you're going to get if you didn't want to call back Ochoa. But... It's not great. The defense had their moments of good, had their moments of bad. Mexico was Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde throughout 90 minutes. That's what they were. And to me personally, it wasn't the most beautiful match. They got it done, but it wasn't the most beautiful match. Jamaica wowed me more. 
Jamaica deserved a draw, frankly. They didn't finish, but they deserved a draw. And for me, Jamaica's going to be kicking themselves. They're going to be kicking themselves. And it's a sad situation that they are kicking themselves because I thought they played a pretty good game. I thought defensively they were strong. They were very cerebral, very tough tonight. Mexico was more tactically in tune. They were more pacey. Jamaica was more cerebral and tough. But it made for a good match, a good mesh of styles. And I thought that both teams had their moments on the night. But Mexico just found a way. Even though they weren't the best team on the night, I think Jamaica... Mexico is slightly better because of the scoreline. But if you take away the goal, I think Jamaica would have been the better team. Let's put it like that. The goal makes sure people are like, oh, Mexico was the better team. I don't think they exactly were. I just think they got a goal. They look like they won. It looks like they had the more efficient night. But again, if this was a draw, I think people would say, you know what? Jamaica was the better team. Jamaica wowed me. And I thought they played tough, especially without Leon Bailey, who I would say may not be their best player nationally, but at least when he's on the national squad, but... They played well. Without Andre Blake, the fact it was only 1-0 arguably should have been a draw. You know, that's that's a big thing to say. Jamaica wowed me, and sadly they came out with nothing. Similar to Canada, honestly, because they came out with nothing. And for me, Mexico, they're lucky they won. They needed to win, but they're lucky they won. They got three points or sitting second. Venezuela, of course, beat Ecuador 2-1 to one while up a man, so they got their win as well. Venezuela might have something to say about this group. Ecuador might. Jamaica still might have something to say, so that's the interesting thing about this group. But with that being said, for me, man of the match, I would say Arteaga for the goal. Luis Chavez, you know, Luis Chavez overall. I think Luis Chavez had an amazing game. He definitely dictated the pace in midfield for Mexico, and if he wasn't on, it would have been worse. I mean, losing Edson was already bad, which is sad. But, yeah, I'm going to go with, yeah, I'm going to go with, as man of the match, Luis Chavez, but big ups to Arteaga for the goal. With that being said, I think that's all I got to say about both matches. With that being said, if you like this video, like and share, subscribe. You know what it is. Tell your friends. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification once subscribe. Send super chats on the live streams. Comment on this video. Let us to play playlists. Playlists. Share this with your friends and family. All that great stuff. I will see you tomorrow for a live watch along of both USA versus Bolivia and Uruguay versus Panama and a review of Uruguay versus Panama tomorrow. We got a good Sunday, 5 o'clock. 4.55. I'll see you then. I'm Ryan and I'm out. Peace. Let's go.